Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Let your life praise the Lord. For your life has breath. Let it praise the Lord. The talents and the gift that God has given you, they have breath. Let it praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As we stand on today, saints of God, as we stand and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, let us praise him. For today we commemorate Pentecost. Hallelujah. We're not going to force our expectation on God, but we're just going to expect God to do what God does on this day. I believe someone needs a, a refilling. I believe someone needs a refreshing. Hallelujah. And today is going to be a blessed day. But it's going to be blessed because we're going to stand together and we're going to worship him. Amen. Let us stand. And let us stand and worship and praise the Lord with our young people. As we worship the Lord, everybody say hallelujah. 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 Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, saints. Woo! I said praise the Lord, saints. Woo! It's Pentecost Sunday. How many of y'all woke up with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. How many got up with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Let the people of God say yeah.
Lord, everyone. We ask that you continue to stand on your feet as we go into the throne of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. This is the day that you have made, Lord God, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today thanking you and praising you for who you are, Lord God. Thank you for being our provider, Lord God, our way maker, Lord God, our keeper, our savior, Lord God. Thank you for being our guide, Lord God, keeping us on the right path, Lord Jesus Christ. When we go astray, Lord God, Father God, you put us towards you, Lord God. You turn our faces towards you, Lord God, and we say thank you, Lord God, because we would not be here right now if it wasn't for your grace, Lord God. As I look back over all the years, Lord God, that I made it through, we can't imagine, hallelujah, where we would be right now if it wasn't for you, Lord God. Father God, and we thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Father God, for being our friend, Lord Jesus Christ, in times of loneliness, Lord God. Thank you for being our strength, Lord God, when we have been weak, Lord God, when we couldn't even get up, Lord God. Father God, you were right there, Lord God, for us. You were right there, Lord God, to cradle us in your arms, Lord God, to be right for us, Lord God, to, to speak words of life, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for comforting us with your word, Lord Jesus Christ. We praise your name, Lord God. It is a privilege to be able to speak to you, Lord God. Is it a privilege, Lord God, to be able to be in communion with you, Lord God? And we don't take it for granted, Lord God. We praise your name, Lord God. Thanking you for another day, Lord God. Thank you, you for waking us up this morning, Lord God. Keeping us in our right mind. Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you for allowing us to have breath in our lungs, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to have the ability to come to church, Lord God, and be in your presence one more time, Lord God. Father God, we honor you today, Lord God, and we don't take it lightly. We don't take your presence for granted, Lord God. We honor your name, Lord God, and we're, we're expecting your spirit to fall upon us, Lord God, on this Pentecost Sunday, just like it did years ago, Lord God. Allow your Holy Spirit to fall on us. Touch the hearts and the minds of your people on today. Father God, we come to you, Lord God, asking for your forgiveness. We ask for your forgiveness on today, Lord God. Everything that we have thought wrong, everything we said wrong, Lord God, that was not like you, Lord God. Forgive us for anything we've said to hurt our brother or our sister, Lord God. Any attitude that we've had, Lord God, towards our people, toward you, Lord God. Father God, forgive us, Lord Jesus Christ, for not spending enough time with you, Lord God, because you are our source, Lord God, and we cannot live without you, Lord God. How dare we think? Think we can go through life, Lord Jesus Christ, paving our own way, Lord God. But you, Lord God, are our source, Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord Jesus Christ, for having ungodly thoughts, Lord God. Allow our focus to stay on you, Lord God. Cleanse our hearts and our minds, Lord God, so that we can be on one accord today, so that your Holy Spirit can fall on us like never before, hallelujah, like never before, Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we ask you to heal the sick and shut in, Lord God. Everyone who was fighting for their life right now, Lord God. Everyone who was in the hospital bed right now, Lord God. We ask you to send your healing power, Lord God. Restore their health, Lord God, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God. Everyone who is standing in the gap for someone on today, Lord God. God, mental health, Lord God, spiritual health, physical health, Lord God. We ask you to restore the souls of your people, Lord God, because we do not belong to this world, Lord God. We belong to you, Lord God. Our life is yours, Lord God. Our soul is yours, Lord God. Our heart is yours, Lord God. And today we give ourselves.
comes back to you, Lord God. Move anything out of the way, Lord God, that is displeasing to your spirit, Lord God. Move anything out of the way that is blocking our blessing, Lord God. Move anything out of the way, Lord Jesus Christ, that is in the way, Lord God, of your spirit coming, Lord God. For we are your temple, Lord Jesus Christ. Allow us to be clean, Lord God, so that you can live inside of us, Lord God, so that you can move inside of us, Lord God. For our body has no room, Lord God, for sin, Lord God. Our body has no room for evilness, Lord God. Allow your spirit to live inside of us, Lord God. Bless this church as only as you can, Lord God. Bless the congregation, Lord God. Bless the elders, the deacons, the ministers, Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, allow your Holy Spirit to fall on every leader in this church, Lord God. Lead and guide us, Lord God, as a church family in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father God, I see breakthrough on today, Lord God. Spiritual, Lord God. Renewal, Lord God, on today, Lord God. Father God, hearts will be mended on today, Lord God. Allow your spirit to fall on us on today, Lord God. We will forever give you the glory that you deserve, Lord God. We will forever give you the praise that you deserve, Lord God. Father God, you are welcome here on today, Lord God. You are welcome to live inside of us on today. You are welcome to move on us today, Lord God. We won't leave this church being the same way we came, Father God. Father God, we seek you right now, asking your spirit to fall on us, Lord God. Fall on us like never before, Lord God. Change our hearts, Lord God. Change our minds, Lord God. Change the pattern of our thinking, Lord Jesus Christ. Change the pattern of our speaking, Lord God. Father God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We ask that you move on us today, Lord God, and allow us to leave differently, Lord God, than we came in, Lord God. We forever give you the glory. We forever give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. As we get our Bibles, we'll be um, coming from John 16, verses 12 through 14. And when you have these verses, can you say amen? I'll be reading from the New Living Testament, and it reads... There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. We will also be reading from John 18 verses 36 through 37. And it reads, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. And finally, we will be reading from Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. And we honor God's word by saying, thanks be to God.
a fight out. We can sing that all day long. I know he will. I know he will. Yeah! Hallelujah. Let's just stay right there. Let's just stay right there. Hallelujah. He'll fight our battle. In the morning time, he'll fight our battle. fight our battle. In the evening, he will fight our battle. In the midnight hour, he will fight our battle. If we just lean on him, depend on him, he is a keeper if you want to be kept. Hallelujah. When we remember that it's he who has made us and not we ourselves, when we remember that he's the beginning and the end, and because we in the middle, we can depend on him. Hallelujah. He knows us even before we were formed in our mother's womb. He will fight our battle. Every trial, every tribulation, every pain. Hallelujah. He will fight every battle. Hallelujah. 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 Let us praise him one more time. Hallelujah. 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 As, as you sit and prepare yourself for offering, we do have a presentation from the Sunday school, um, if you will. Why don't you come? Hallelujah. Today, as we continue to recognize and show our appreciation for the Today, as we continue to recognize and show our appreciation for our Sunday school teachers throughout the month of May, we would like to start by recognizing our beginners and teen class teachers. Sister Ayana Williams, our beginner class teacher. Sister Ayana Williams has been a faithful member of the Living Church Ministries for over 17 years. She has served in the capacity of Sunday school teacher for approximately 14 of those 17 years. Sister Ayana has a quiet, gentle, sweet spirit. She's always thinking about others. She works faithfully behind the scenes and brings the same kind of faithfulness to her role as Sunday school teacher. Help us recognize today and show appreciation for Sister Ayana Williams, our beginner class teacher. Sister Robin Campbell, our teen class teacher. Sister Robin has been a faithful member of the Living Church Ministries for over 15 years. She has served in the capacity of Sunday school teacher for over 13 years. Sister Robin is generous. She is our one of a kind, very direct, tells it like it is, teen class teacher. Sister Robin keeps it real with her students and makes her lessons very relatable to the issues in today's world. She is indeed one of a kind. Help us recognize and show appreciation today for Sister Robin Campbell, our teen class teacher. 
Sister Tanya Butler. Sister Tanya has been a faithful member of the Living Church Ministries for over 28 years. She has served in the capacity of Sunday school teacher for approximately 26 of those 28 years. She has also served in the capacity as Sunday school superintendent. Sister Tanya is creative, smart, funny, and talented, and brings the same kind of energy and enthusiasm to her Sunday school class. She makes learning fun for all her students. Help us recognize and show appreciation today for Sister Tanya Butler, our beginner class teacher. Brother Robert Gramwell, our teen class teacher. Brother Bramwell has been a faithful member of the Living Church Ministries for over 20 years. He has served in the capacity of Sunday school teacher for approximately 18 years. Brother Bramwell is faithful. He supports the ministry and is keen on every detail. He is a strategic thinker who is very thorough and analytical and who brings the same kind of thoughtfulness to his Sunday school lessons. Brother Bramwell loves the Lord and loves telling others about him. Help us recognize and show appreciation today for Brother Robert Bramwell, our teen class teacher. Thank you, teacher. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for our teacher. We celebrate you on this day. Amen. It's offering time in the building. Hallelujah. 
Let us stand, Malachi 3 and 10. And the word of the Lord says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room enough to store it. Hallelujah. Under the direction of our usher, let us bring cheerfully. Hallelujah. Thank you for being so good. If you're thankful on the day, let me hear your worship. Hallelujah.
place my feet on solid ground. You've been good to me. to honor you. 
Come on and give the Lord a wave offering. Give the Lord a praise in your own way. <laughs> praise the Lord. We thank God for you, you that are listening to us by way of live stream, you that are in the building today. We thank God for the Holy Ghost on this celebration of Pentecost Sunday. Come on, I didn't say thank God for me. I said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Come to worship you. Come on, come on now. Y'all got to do better than that. Put your hand together like the devil is in between them. Holy Ghost, you're still in charge. Oh, yeah. Holy Ghost, you're still in charge of your church. My, my, my. I feel a praise, but I got to get through this. Who 
just glad you saved? Who just glad you saved? I, I, I don't have to have nothing. Don't have to preach. Don't have to ask me. Nothing. I'm just glad I'm saved. Glory, hallelujah. My, my, my. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on. We thank God for this day. We honor the spirit of Christ. We honor the spirit of Christ, the head of the church, our companion, lady parson, our ministers, our lead elder, Elder Wallace, all of the elders, ministers in the house, you that are visiting. We are so honored to have Elder and Sister Saul to the day from our elder brother, uh, Apostle Sanders. It's so good to see you in the house today. Thank you so very much. If you are visiting today on this day, we welcome you. We thank God for you. We bless God for you. All right, at this time, we're going to continue on our, our theme and our series that we begun a few weeks ago. The Lord is behind you 100%. The Holy Ghost got your back. <laughs> Tell somebody, the Holy Ghost got your back. <laughs> Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. We thank God for Lady Parsha. What a wonderful job on first on uh, Mother's Day. <laughs> Keep calling. So we're going to continue uh, our series. We've been talking about the Holy Ghost, even on Wednesday night and on Sunday, the post-resurrection and pre-Pentecost Jesus, as well as our bodies being the temple of the Holy Ghost. And it raises a whole thing, thought that we not often don't think about is just the importance of taking care of the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we spoke briefly on Wednesday night, even about some of the things that we know uh, that's not good to our physical body. It is the temple. It is the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. So we're going to con continue today uh, with the book of Revelation, the first chapter being the backdrop, but we're going to go to our scripture reading, uh, John 16 and 18 and Acts 2. And uh, we're not going to read it all again, but going to hit some highlights from there. Father, we're so grateful, so humble that we're in this house today. God, we don't take it lightly that we're even able to breathe. It is by your mercy that we're not consumed. Now, God, we're asking you to speak to your people. Give us words of life, words of comfort. Bless us as only you can and make us a blessing. In the matchless name, in Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Jesus says to his uh, disciples, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when the spirit of truth, everybody said the spirit of truth, come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come. That's also the spirit of prophecy. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. He's also the spirit of glory. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of prophecy. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of glory. I want to speak to you just from a few minutes here. The Holy Ghost do you in my life. Holy Ghost do you in my life. On last Sunday, I, I uh, someone was commenting on a a suit coat, I think, a tire that I had. 
And I told them now, in my day, I would have been cool. I'm cool. But I said, well, let me go ask the young people what I'm supposed to be now. And after they kind of discussed it a little bit, they said, Pastor, you lit. <laughs> and we also call it fire. And I said, hmm, that would be the Holy Ghost. <laughs> lit and uh, fire. Now, I just want to kind of kind of rewind just a little bit on the last time we stood before you, um, we talked about just the importance of the Holy Spirit speaking. Coming from the book of Revelation, John is to write to all of the churches. He was told the angel of the church. He writes to the angel of the church, the messenger a.k.a. the pastor. I told you I'm not the message. I'm just the messenger. We live in a time where so many preachers are becoming the message. They're gurus. They're philosophers. They're life coaches. But how can they hear without a preacher? We're not life coaches. We're not gurus. We are preachers privileged and given to the church by Jesus. And John sees the preachers in his right hand as he walks in the midst of the churches. The right hand in the Bible is a privileged position, a place of power. Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. The psalmist says, in thy presence there's fullness of joy. On thy right hand pleasures evermore. The pastor, the messenger, is privileged to be carrying the message from the Holy Spirit that gets it from Jesus. Now, as I mentioned, let me remind you of how this works. I used anthropomorphic expressions on last week, which means that you're taking something of the natural and explaining the spiritual by it. As to say, God breathed into Adam. Well, God is spirit. You can't see him, but we know what happens when we breathe. I mean, you can't talk without breathing. When God talks, he breathes. And his breath is called holy breath, a.k.a. Holy Spirit. He breathed the breath into, the, into Adam. The resurrected Christ, now that he had dealt with sin, in John the 20th chapter, he breathed on them in anticipation of, of them receiving the Holy Ghost, and he said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Now, let me remind you how this works. Jesus says, I will tell him, the Holy Spirit, what to tell you. Romans 8, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of Christ. It's the breath. You can't separate your breath from you. So it's not but one God, one Christ. It's like it's not but one running standing up here. This, these are my words that I'm speaking, and I cannot talk without breathing. God doesn't talk without breathing. When and the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters in Genesis 1 and 2, and then God said. So Jesus said, this is how this works. And I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be in glory, glorified. But I'm going to tell the Holy Spirit what to tell you. And so John says to every church, write. Church of Ephesus all the way to the church of Laodicea. Write to the angel. And then every church is told, he that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the church. Wait a minute, the angel is talking, but you're supposed to hear the spirit. The angel is talking, but you're supposed to hear the spirit. Now, just, just, just get a graphical vis visual because every, when, when John heard and he turned around and he saw Jesus, he saw one like the Son of Man, which is in from the Daniel 7, who was dressed like the Ancient of Days, which is in Daniel 7, where the Son of Man comes to the Ancient of Days and get an eternal kingdom. But he's also 
dressed in the priestly robe, so he's also the high priest. The son of man is the ancient of days who's also the high priest. And then he goes on to say he was, I'm Lord Almighty, the first and the last, Alpha and Omega, God Almighty, which means that everything that exists that's real, God is it. Uh, when John turns around, he hears a loud voice, but when he turns around, he sees the fullness of all that Christ is. <laughs> In redemption, he's the son of man. From eternity, past, and future, he is the ancient of days. Now he is it's in the high priest's office, walking in the midst of the churches, making sure that everything is in order. Now, now get a visual, because whether you're in this building or not, if you are a church member, that means that even on your job, the Lord Jesus Christ is walking around checking you out. And if he finds something that's going to keep you from his glory, he relates it to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lets your pastor know to let you know. They got somebody telling the pastor is not the message. I'm just the messenger. How many times, I'm just reviewing now, how many times have someone said, Pastor, just thank God for you shared with me A, B. And I'm looking like a deer in the headlight. I didn't say that. Then somebody else come and say, Pastor, thank God for the message you just said, such and such. I don't remember saying that. But that's what the Holy Spirit does. Because there's no way that one man can take one message and it blesses all of the people that's in charge. Unless the Holy Spirit is taking the message and giving revelation to individuals. And they all get blessed by God. It's not rocket science. When you're sitting listening to a radio, you don't see the AM wave, frequency modulated. It's, it's just wind, frequency modulation, amplitude modulation. It's just the manipulation of wind. <laughs> just like, I don't care how, what they call it. Mm -hmm. It's just manipulation of the wind, just how fast you can make it go. G, your, your phone, it's just manipulation of the wind. So you don't, you don't see it. Just like Jesus said, it's like the wind. You don't see. You don't see the radio waves. But when you put a radio in your house, you can pick it up. But you still don't see the disc jockey that's talking. Jesus is the disc jockey. The Holy Ghost is the wave. And your pastor is the radio. But let me put it another way. Some of y'all love FM radio and satellite radio. You don't know how it works. And you can't see it working. And you, you get upset whenever you hadn't paid your bills and it run out in your car. Because you know it's supposed to be working. You don't know how it works. If, we had, if everybody had to know how a car worked before they could get licensed, very few people would be driving. Then why y'all trying to understand God when God just say, just have faith? <laughs> and then why you, why you, well, I don't get it because I can't see it. That's blind faith. No, well, you got a blind radio wave. But you still listen to your radio. Let me, let me put it this way. You got, you don't see the satellite, but it's up there. And I love waves. I don't want to go nowhere without waves. I wonder what we did without waves. Google Maps. But the satellite is up there. It's about 13 or 14 of them, just in, in orbit. But, but really, there is some station on the ground somewhere doing an uplink, radio waves, high-speed radio waves, uplink. And when it gets to the satellite, the satellite makes it big and expands it so it'll go all over the world. And then there comes a downlink to your car. You don't understand that. I don't even understand it. I just love the way it works. That's why I don't have to, I don't have to understand the Holy Ghost. I don't have to understand the anointing. All I want to do is be able to feel it. 
God don't have to explain it to me. And so, yes, Jesus is the station. The Holy Ghost is the uplink and the downlink. Yes, and the satellite. The radio is the messenger. Am I saying to you today, God has a system. Jesus says, I got a whole lot more to say to you. But he's just one person. But when I get in glory, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. And I'm just going to talk to him. And he's going to get the message everywhere. So much so that Jesus said, greater works than these than you're going to do. It's necessary that I go to my father. Because when I go to my father, if I don't, the comforter, he's the comforter, will not come. But when he comes, he's going to lead and guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth because the world is full of the lie. But did I tell you the other week? The devil only has one thing, the lie. Distortion, distraction, delusion, and some people are just delirious. It all starts on a lie. I explained it to you by the computer. The computer only stands one thing, one binary bit, whether it's on or off, ones or zeros. Your sophisticated phone is not a smartphone. It's a dumb phone that has someone has did circuitry to understand and manipulate ones and zeros, and they added those ones and zeros together, hexadecimal numbers, and you got a variation of billions of things that you can do. Saints, that's what the devil has. He only has one lie. He keeps putting the twist on the lie based upon how old you are. When you're little, it's a kind of a lie. When you get a teenager, he gives the twist on the lie based upon what you're doing. When you become a young adult, he just adjusts the lies. With, we, I don't have to explain to nobody that we're in a distracted world a distorted world, a delusional world. God knows they don't know what's going to happen in the election because of AI, artificial intelligence. Anything that's artificial is not intelligent. Anything that is virtual is not reality. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. Hmm. It's all a lie. That's all the devil's got is a lie. He wants you to think it's complicated. All he has is a lie. That's why Jesus said, "Just I'm going to uncomplicate everything. I am the truth. Come on, Jesus, it's got to be something else. All of these gods of the Roman deities, uh, based upon the Greek deities, they're all a bunch of lies. Hades is not a god, it's a place. Death is not a god called Thanatos. Death is a real reality. Amen. Pan is not a god. You know, that's where we get pandemic from. He's not a god. It's the devil trying to make you panic. It's all a lie. Jesus said, I am the truth. That's all you got to know. Tell somebody, it's not complicated. We've complicated church. But it's just like anything else. It's just like a computer. Ones and zeros. On and off. Good and evil. Life or death. Choose life so that you will live. It's not complicated, saints. You don't have to decide but two things. Whether I want God or whether I want the devil. Whether I want to go to heaven or hell. It ain't none of this other stuff. Don't complicate it. There's not but two places to go. Heaven or hell. Precatory is a lie. It's all a lie. And Jesus says he, he, he was a murderer from the beginning, John 8. He was a murderer from the beginning. His whole goal of lying, deceiving, was to bring about murder. It's all a lie. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth because the world is full of various forms of lies. He said, you are of your father, the devil, John 8. The Holy Spirit uncomplicates life. He brings us back into focus about reality and what is true. You don't have to know a whole lot of stuff. Hallelujah. You don't have to understand a whole lot of things. Listen, you do not have to be a theologian to be saved. Now, I study to show myself approved because when I, I want to be able to hear what the Holy Spirit says to me. And yes, and I have notes. And, and you know, the, the Pentecostal church, some leaders got, well, if, if it's written down on paper, it can't, be, it can't be the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is supposed to bring it uh, to your rem remembrance. And listen, but when you read the book of Revelation, everything is written down. He 
said, to the church at Ephesus, right. To the church at Saul, that's already dead, but he said, right. To the church at Laodicea, they think they're rich, but they're poor. He said, right. To the church at Thyatira, they got all kind of stuff going on, including fornication, homosexuality, and all kind of stuff. He said, right. And y'all talking about, well, it can't be the Holy Ghost if you got to write it. What? Now, I didn't tell y'all to go start using your notes. I'm just using mine. Hear me. Hear me. Any preacher that's spirit-filled, even when he's preparing for the message, the Holy Spirit is speaking to him. And how many times have people gotten upset with me because they said somebody told me their, about their business and it was the first time they showed up here? That's the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He uncomplicates everything. Just know the truth. You should know the truth. And the truth will make you free. You don't have to know psychology, philosophy to be free. You don't even have to know theology. Just know God and you will know the truth. He will lead and guide you into all truth. You don't have to read a whole lot of commentaries. You don't have to, you don't have to, my God, you don't have to be a life coach or no other kind of coach. Just believe what God says. And you will be able to be in the truth. That's why I know there are extra Bibles. I know about the Apocrypha. I know about all of those other books and stuff. Had a chance to look at some of them. When somebody told me, he said, well, there are, you know there are more books of the Bible as if they was telling me something that was intelligent. I said, my God, 66 is enough. Don't give me no more. I'm trying to figure out the ones I got. Now you're trying to give me some more. How many know that you have everything you need to be saved? In the 66 book, you have everything you need to meet the rapture in the 66 books. If you don't ever learn about the Apocrypha or the Gospel of Thomas or the Gospel of Judas or anybody else, you got enough in the Word of God. Just listen to the truth, love the truth, and you will be saved. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is also the spirit of prophecy. Listen to what Jesus said. He will guide you into all truth. He will speak to you only things he hears. He will tell you what is yet to come. My God, in, Romans, in Revelation 19 and 10, there was a messenger, one of his brethren, that had been already elevated around the throne. He came out and said, it's time for the marriage supper. And when John heard the voice, he thought it was another angel or Jesus. So he fell down to worship him. He said, no, don't worship me. He was just announcing uh, the wedding, he said, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see that you don't do that. I am your fellow servant and of the brother that have the testimony of Jesus. Revelation 12, the devil went to go after those who had the testimony of Jesus Christ, which means that the devil can run you down, walk you down, talk you down. But honey, when it's all over, you're going to be up there with Jesus, enjoying Jesus. <laughs> For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. He, he is the spirit of prophecy. The Holy Ghost want to talk to you. And just sitting in here with the Holy Ghost talk to me. And now if you're looking at your phone, he ain't going to talk to you. If you're trying to figure out what you're going to do next week, he can't talk to you. John said, I heard a loud voice. When you hear a loud voice behind you, it's going to get your attention. The Holy Ghost wants your attention on Sunday morning. When you come here, when you really understand this, people won't be running around just saying anything about preachers who's in the right hand of Jesus. Doesn't matter how jacked up they are, Jesus will handle them. But he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. You want to know what God wants to say to you. And that's why you can't be distracted by anything else. Because what the Spirit has to say to you can be a matter of life and death. And so Jesus says that I am, I come to bear witness of the truth. Those that hear my, those that hear my voice are those who hear the truth. Which means that without being spirit-filled, you, you, you cannot hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Everybody that's sitting in the congregation, if that's not spirit-filled, they're going to e hear me with their natural ears. But he that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the church. If a person is not connecting with the Holy Spirit, they won't be able to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of prophecy. So he has to conclude from the scripture that being filled with the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Ghost, is being filled with what you need to hear the voice of Jesus. 
Adam was not a living soul, and he was filled with the spirit, which is the breath of God, Genesis 2 and 7. He breathed on them. As I said, John 20, they were dead until Jesus said, breathe on them and so receive the Holy Ghost. He is the spirit of life. As mentioned in Romans, the 8th chapter. So Jesus said to them, peace be unto you, receive you the Holy Ghost. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The word translated filled also means to furnish with. It means to provide what is needed to be equipped and what is needed, what is consistent. And after the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall have power. Acts, Acts 1 and 8. You shall have power. Now, first and foremost, the Holy Spirit has to come upon you, which means to arrive in your life. The word come upon means to arrive. Has he arrived in your life? How many know that today he can arrive in your life? He first has to arrive. Huh. And so the, the word come upon means to arrive. The people say, well, when I got the Holy Ghost, no, you didn't have the, no, you didn't get the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost arrived. Somebody was praying for you, and the Holy Ghost arrived. You showed up, wasn't even planning to be in church. You just wanted to come there to see who you could see. But the Holy Ghost arrived. And you came to a meeting jacked up and you left lifted up because the Holy Ghost arrived while you was there. How many know when the Holy Ghost arrives, you can't help yourself? Jesus is saying to you, you cannot do anything for me before the Holy Ghost arrives. After the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall have power. Now, there are several words in the, in the Bible that's translated power, kratos, dominion power, uh, excuse, uh, strength and ability power, ecstasy, authority power. But the Holy Ghost power is miraculous power. The Holy Ghost power is dunamis power. The Holy Ghost power is unlike any other power. I don't care what kind of power you got, black power, white power, pine power, horse power, whatever kind of power you got, there is no power like the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. There is no resurrection power apart from the Holy Ghost. That's why, honey, no matter where they bury your body, if the Holy Ghost goes down with you, you're going to get up when the trumpet sounds. You're going to get up when his voice comes. Because the Holy Ghost in you is the connection, the down payment, the Arabon of our inheritance. And you know if you get a house, you got to have the down payment. The Bible, Ephesians 1 said the Holy Ghost is the down payment, the Arabon of our inheritance. In other words, when you got the Holy Ghost, you got the down payment, you just waiting for the purchase possession. I wish somebody in here who got the power payment said my house in glory is secured. My house in glory is secure. If the earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, I got another building. Not made by hands. I'm talking about Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost power in you is how God is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that you ask or think. Because man, tell him I'm off the disabled list because God is able. I ain't crippled by life. I ain't jacked up by life. I ain't stumbling over life. I'm off the disabled list because I'm filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, you got to tell somebody I'm off the disabled list. I ain't handicapped no more. The pandemic didn't handicap me, honey. The word filled means to be furnished with. God furnishes you with the Holy Ghost. He is the gift of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to pay for him. God says, I went to hell and back to furnish you. How can we escape? if we neglect so great a salvation. God said, I went to hell and back to furnish you with the power you need to make it through this hellish world. And you can't do anything without the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, not for me, but when you get the power of the Holy Ghost, you can be a witness, a martus, a martyr. When you get the power of the Holy Ghost, the first will be last and the last will be first. You can love your enemies because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. You can't love folk who talk about you without the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't hug people who mug you unless you got the Holy Ghost. You can't hug folk who you know don't like you, but the power of the Holy Ghost will make you smile at people, give to people who don't even like you. I'm talking about miraculous power. I 
talking about miraculous power. I'm not talking about your horsepower, your pine power, or your black power. I'm talking about miraculous power. The Holy Ghost is the only miraculous power that we have. It's a phenomenon. And Jesus is saying, you can't do nothing without this. Yes, you got Kratos dominion power. Yes, you got excuse ability. Yes, you got authority, a Sousa, but I'm talking about dunamis, dynamite, explosive, not sporadic, but spontaneous. My God, after being saved for 30 some years, I ain't got to think about it no more. All I got to do is roll out my bed and I feel a praise coming on. Anybody like me? You way past thinking about his goodness. All you got to do is wake up. Honey, you died last night. Birds chirping. Cicadas saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And you went to sleep. A criminal came down your street, but the Holy Ghost wouldn't let him top at your house. Somebody got robbed last night, but the Holy Ghost said, uh-uh, you go somewhere else. Dunamis. The Holy Spirit. Wants to first come upon you. For you to be in this world who created God for God, for you to be what God created you to be. You have to have the Holy Ghost so you can do what God called you to do. The Holy Spirit wants to come upon you so he can feel you. But the Holy Spirit also want to sit upon you. Acts 2 and 3, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And he sat upon each of them. Now, you got to love this stuff. Look at that. The Holy Spirit wants to sit upon you. He wants to sit on you. The word sit upon is cathizo. It means to sit down. It means to dwell. And it also means to hover over or to remain. Now, that takes us all the way back to Genesis 1. Because when the Bible said the spirit of God hovered over the waters, the word that the, 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 the hummingbird is, is, is how you can visualize this. If you ever seen a hummingbird, a hummingbird just gets somewhere, he's able to hover. The only bird, uh, other birds have to flap their wings real quick just to hover, but a hummingbird got flapping all made into them. Their, their wings are moving so fast you can't even see it. Hummingbirds were the inspiration for helicopters. Helicopters can hover over because they can hover in one place because they got the inspiration came from a hell from a hummingbird. But the inspiration for the hummingbird came from the word of God. They, the Holy Spirit hovers over. The Holy Spirit hovers over. If we move uh, farther, uh, 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 that's, that's Genesis. But Deuteronomy 32 and 11, please write that down. Deuteronomy 32 and 11. When, yeah, now, God created at the beginning, but when God created Israel as a nation, God says in Deuteronomy 32 and 11, as an eagle stirred up her nest, Fluttereth, same word, over her young, spread up abroad her wings, take them and bear them on their, her wings. God is saying, when I created, created you down at the Red Sea, the cloud was over there, and, and, and symbolic of the spirit of God, a cloud of fire. And, and the Bible said, God looked through the cloud, and he blew the wind, and, and the chariot wheels of, the, of, the, of Pharaoh and his army just went crazy. But God says he, he had light on one side and the darkness on the other side. So God breathed, and the water separated and divided because God was breathing. But God was hovering over. He was hovering over them. He was hovering over, creating them into a nation. When God recreated the world after the water, he covered it with water. Water. And Noah, what does Noah send out? He sends out a dove, and the dove hovers over the water and can't find a resting place. They come back. So the dove becomes symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Whenever Jesus is baptized, because any time creation happens, it comes up out of water. Jesus came out of the water, the inaugurator of the new creation, and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove and hovered over him. Because somebody tell him, I want the Holy Ghost to sit on me. The Holy Ghost want to fill you. But the Holy Ghost want to hover over you. Lord, have mercy. 
Jesus used this language, Matthew 23 and 37. Write that down. Matthew 23 and 37. Jesus said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, one who killeth the prophets and stoned those who were sent to her. How often I want to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Now listen, how I would have wanted to gather you under her wings. Listen, when a mother hen flaps her wings, I grew up in the country, I've seen this more than once. It's a sign that of dominance. She is gathering her chicks, especially when there's a fox or a cat or somewhere, a, a, a hen will make herself look bigger and her wings begin to flap real quick so that the chicks can run under her wings and find protection. Let me tell you something, honey. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. That's one thing. Making sure that you're cleaned up from the inside out. But when you go on your job and when you're in your car and when you're riding along the street, the Holy Spirit is hovering over you, hovering over you, making sure that the accident happens somewhere else, hovering over you, making sure that the disease hits somebody else, hovering over you, making sure that you make it to your destination, hovering over over you when it's not your time, honey. You can't check out of here until God signs off on it. Why not? Because the Holy Spirit is hovering over you. How many times have you had an accident and walked out of your car? How many times when you took something bad and your stomach picked it out? It's the Holy Spirit hovering over you. The Holy Spirit want to sit on you to make sure that you make it from here to glory. How many know that the Holy Spirit is sitting on you making sure that your power survives, making sure that you survive? I wish somebody was Say like me, Holy Ghost, sit on me. I need everybody to stand real quick and say, Holy Ghost, sit on me. I need to be protected. I need to be secure. I need to be found. I need to be saved. Holy Ghost, sit on me. He's hovering over you. Yes, he's inside of you. But he's also hovering over you. I heard the songwriter say, when I get in glory, I'm going to tune up my heart. I'm going to look up David, talk to Peter, and chat with Paul. Honey, you're going to be so shocked of how you really got saved. You ain't going to be thinking about Peter. You ain't going to be thinking about Paul. Yeah, I want to see Abraham after I see Jesus. Because when I see Jesus, when I see Jesus, it's going to be what? Amen. I don't care about tuning up no hop. I don't care about nothing else. I just got to be saved. And the Holy Ghost is hovering over you, making sure that you are saved. Flapping, flapping, flapping. He's hovering over you. come to feel you. He come to sit on you. Hallelujah. The spirit of truth and the Holy Spirit, he also come to rest on you. He's the spirit of glory. Jesus says he's going to glorify me by telling you and you're going to go through Still loving me. You're going to glorify me. First Peter got the message. Peter got the message. 414. First Peter 414. Please write it down. First Peter 414. If you be reproached, reviled, or hated on for the name of Christ, insulted for being a Christian, attacked for having a standard young people, happy are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of glory. When the Holy Spirit is in you, hovering over you, the Holy Spirit is also just resting upon you. Now listen, say the word resting is translated. Resting is from the word means refreshing. It means stimulating. It means how many times have you gone through but you got back up ready to go through again. I know you were fussing and fighting, but when you got through fussing and fighting, you said, what devil going to happen to me next? I know you go through your struggle, you talk about your trials, but then you get up in the morning like you're going to have hell hound for breakfast and demons for lunch. You ready to go for it again. 
when someone is attacking you because the Holy Spirit is inside of you, you has you maintaining a standard of holiness and you're refusing to compromise it, the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. He's glorified when you say, young people, when you say, no, I'm not doing that. The Holy Spirit is glorified. They will attack you with their mouth. They will say everything about you. And you still say, I'm not doing that. You are glorifying Jesus. And the reason why you're doing it, because the Holy Spirit is resting on you. He is refreshing you. When someone is attacking you, he is refreshing you. That's why you don't get weary in well-doing, because the Holy Spirit keeps refreshing you. That's why your light afflictions do not wear you out. The devil wants to wear you out, but the Holy Spirit hovering over you and filling you, he is refreshing you. Listen, saints, Christ is our example. On the way to the cross, he was in a process of being glorified. He was going to be glorified. He wanted to get to the glory. He said, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had before I came here. And God said, I've already done it, and I'm going to glorify you. So Jesus know he's going to be glorified. But physically, he was so beat up and beat down with blood gushing from every part of his body that he is, he is too exhausted and in pain to bear his own cross. He, they they, they want to kill him before he gets to the cross because the devil heard Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to him. So he want to beat him down. He's got to kill him before he gets to the cross. But Jesus said, no man take my life. I lay it down. Any normal man who would have shed that much blood, by the time he got to the cross, he would have already been dead. But see, you can't kill God. The life of the flesh is in the blood, but the life of the spirit is in God. So Jesus hanging up there with no blood in his body, but he still had to release his life because God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Honey, with God is inside of you. That's why your blood can be drained. They can bury you in the ground. But if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. If it dwells in you, all your stuff gonna come back together and you're gonna be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I wish somebody who's glad they got the Holy Ghost refreshing them would just tell the Lord, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he's nailed to the cross. But the Holy Ghost is refreshing him. He said, Father, forgive them. When you got the Holy Ghost refreshing you, you can forgive folk who don't like you. He stopped dying and make sure that a man who put faith in him could go to paradise. Because when the Holy Ghost is refreshing you, you want your mean boss to be saved. You want your mean uncle to be saved. When the Holy Ghost is refreshing you, you don't want nobody to go to hell. Jesus hanging on the cross took care of his mother. He talked to God. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? So when the Holy Ghost is refreshing you, you don't complain to people. You talk to God. Lord, have mercy. When the Holy Ghost is in you, causing the glory of God to rest on you. Hallelujah. I think about Paul and Simon beat down, thrown into prison. But at midnight, the Holy Ghost refreshed them. They sung and prayed bloody in stocks. Honey, when the Holy Ghost is refreshing you, you don't worry about what people are doing. You just want God to do him. Touch them and tell them, neighbor, I want the Holy Ghost to be the Holy Ghost in my life. Now tell the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, do you. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I need. You know what I need. Holy Ghost, do you. I remember the pandemic. Hallelujah. Some folks got stressed out. They're still depressed. Some folks is talking about how bad it was. How they didn't need help people being quarantined. They were taking all kind of pills. And I used to wonder why in the world that during the pandemic, I was having the best time of my life. During the pandemic, the Holy Ghost refreshed me. I learned how to preach to myself. 
If y'all don't want to hear nothing, the pandemic taught me how to preach to myself. Preach, parson, I believe I will. When God gets through with me, the pandemic refreshed me because the glory of God was hovering over my house. I learned from the pandemic how to encourage myself. Is there anybody who learned? I want to talk to somebody who had the Holy Ghost refreshing you, hovering over your life, hovering over your house. Honey, I was glad. Lord, have mercy. My wife was in her room listening to Pentecostal music, dancing and shouting, speaking in tongues. The, the, the pandemic taught me. Honey, she really said she don't need the church to shout. She don't need people to shout. All she got to do is listen to a, a Pentecostal song, and she's speaking in tongues. Will y'all give me some Pentecostal music? I'm about to close this out. Lord, I praise you. Is there anybody in here got the spirit of glory hanging over your life? I want you to tell the Holy Ghost, do you, do you, my light affliction, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep pressing, because the Holy Holy Ghost uh, is over me. Uh, no one, uh, Isaiah said, just wait on God. Uh, just trust in God. Uh, don't make alliances uh, with other people. Uh, wait on God. Uh, Isaiah said, listen here. Uh, even a young man get weak. Uh, they lose their strength. Uh, but they that wait uh, upon the Lord, uh, anybody waiting uh, shall renew their strength strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. I need somebody who's got the Holy Ghost to just walk and let the devil know I'm walking in power. I'm walking in anointing. I'm walking in joy. I'm walking in love. I'm walking. I'm walking in power as the Holy Ghost flutters over my head as the Holy Ghost uh, rests on my life uh, as the Holy Ghost uh, fill my life. Anybody in here, just shake somebody uh, who's power filled, uh, who's power packed uh, and tell her it don't take nobody uh, but me and you uh, to drive uh, the devil out of our life. Uh, walk in victory. Uh, walk in victory. Walk in victory. I, 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 I need somebody uh, to walk in victory. Let the Holy Ghost fall. Let the Holy Ghost fall. Tell the Holy Ghost, sit on me. 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 Sit on me, Jesus. Sit on me. 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 Sit on me, sit on me, sit on me, refresh 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 me, I gotta make it. I gotta make it. 
arms around the throne. I got to make it when the last trumpet sound. Holy Ghost, sit on me. Holy Ghost, refresh me. Holy Ghost, feel me. Holy Ghost, talk to me. Talk to me. Can you give God a praise? Where there are two or three. I feel the anointing of healing. Don't take but two folk. I need just one person to come and agree with me. You're going to leave this place different than the way you came. You're going to leave here. You're going to leave here different. Let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost power, 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 power. He got me. He got me. He got me. He got me. If he got you, tell yourself. He got me. He got me. He got me. He got me. Can't help myself. Can't help myself. Can't help myself. He got me. 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 In the name of Jesus. He got me. He got me. He got me. He got me. In my bones. In my bones. Pentecostal music. I feel a praise in this house. Put your hand together. Put your hand together. Everybody, let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. He got you. If he got you, you better praise him. You better praise him. You better praise him. Just put your Ministers, help me out here. Hover over me. Just go across the aisle and hover. Go across the aisle and hover. Walk through the aisles, ministers, Holy and God. hover. Holy Ghost. Hover. Hover. Holy Ghost. Somebody need healing. Somebody need deliverance. Somebody need joy. Somebody need peace. Hover. Holy Ghost, 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 Holy
the devil. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hover. 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 Hover over. Hover over the choir. Hover over the music. Hover over the choir. Hover over the choir. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Refresh me and feel me. I need somebody to say feel me all over again. I need a refilling. I need a refilling. I need a refilling. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Now just hug somebody that's anointed. I tell you to hug somebody that's anointed. Yeah, tell him he got me. I told him to do you and he got me. I didn't come here to act like this. I didn't come here to act like this, but I told the Holy Ghost to do you and he got me. Lay hands on yourself and say, be healed. You got the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, be healed. Touch your head, be healed. Touch your throat, that tumor, say, be healed. These signs shall follow them that believe. He got me. We gotta get out of here. Give the Lord his wave offering. Now, if you believe it, I'm, if you don't believe it, I'm not talking to you. But if you believe it, good. Three is a good number for God. Tell three people the Holy Ghost got me.
Don't rush it. The Holy Ghost got me. He got me. I didn't come here to act like this. I didn't plan to act like this. Jeremiah, I didn't plan to act like this. But he got me. Y'all need to start letting the Holy Ghost come upon you. You ain't got to teach nobody how to do this. I understand. I understand. I understand the well-meaning sisters and brothers trying to solidify and solidify the Holy Ghost. So they started teaching people how to speak in tongues. But if you want to act like acts, ain't nobody got to teach you to do this. How many went to a meeting hadn't planned to be saved, but the Holy Ghost got you? You, might, you know you're supposed to be dead. That's why you don't need to leave here until you praise him. You know you're supposed to be dead, but somebody prayed for you, and the Holy Ghost came and got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just talk about myself. When we went about five miles on the wrong side of the road, the Holy Ghost sent a state patrolman to push us off the road because it wasn't time for us to die. The Holy Ghost had me, and the Holy Ghost got me. I ain't leaving here until the Holy Ghost says so. Tell somebody the Holy Ghost got me, and I ain't going nowhere until the Holy Ghost says And when I do leave, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Holy Ghost, do you in my life. Everybody stand. Oh, open floodgates, heaven, let it Let it rain. Open the flood. Hey, my, my, my. Let it. Come on, Jesus. Can you tell it with me? Let it rain. Let it feel the rain. Feel the rain. If you're here today, you don't have to wait. If you haven't been down in his name, a minister would do it today. You haven't been down in this name. Listen. You need to pause. If you are not spirit filled today, I need you to listen to me. This is not the doctrine of an apostolic church or a Pentecostal church. It's not rocket science. We were dead in sin and trespasses. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of life. There's no resurrection. As a leader in the church, I repent. I repent because denomination has dumbed down revelation. I'll say that again. Denominations have dumbed down revelation. This is not my doctrine. He that have not the spirit of Christ is not of his. Romans 8. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of God. Romans 8. He's the spirit of Christ. Romans 8. He's the spirit of adoption. Romans 8. He's the spirit of life. Oh. 
Oh my, 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 my. Open. Why don't you tell them to just to open the floodgates and rain on me? We're going to let you go. Listen, we've already. We've already prayed for you. You Listen, how many spirit filled in this house? You don't have to. Everybody close your eyes. Just wave your hand if you're already spirit filled. And if you're not spirit filled, I don't want to close out without encouraging you to come down. Let us lay hands on you. You don't want to. You don't want to keep going without this all-encompassing Holy Ghost power. Every real, every real church angel will not be talking about hokey dope. A real church angel is not going to be talking about how much money you can get or how to be a guru and all of this other stuff. A real preacher, an angel is going to tell you, you must be born again with the water and of the spirit. We celebrate the Holy Ghost not because we just want to be doing something. We celebrate the Holy Spirit because Jesus sent him in the church to keep us informed of where we need to come up, what we need to adjust, and what he's pleased with, what he's not pleased with. This is not our first rodeo. There are churches like the Church of Laodicea. They think they're rich, but they broke, poor. There are churches like Sardis. They got a name that they're dead, they're alive, but they are dead. But they're still churches. There are churches like Thyatira. have the doctrine of Balaam where fornication and sexual sins are all right as long as you know how to sing, shout, and dance. Jesus said, tell them I'm going to come and fight with them with my mouth. Those who repent will overcome. We can still overcome. Don't think there's no perfect church. We all got issues. But we come together on Sunday so the Holy Ghost can talk to us and let us know what Jesus wants us to know. One more time, if you haven't been down in his name, if you haven't been down in the name of Jesus, you can come at this time. Or if you're yet to be filled with the Holy Spirit, let one of the ministers lay hands on you. The Holy Ghost came, Acts 19 and 6, they laid hands on them. Acts 8, at Samaria, they laid hands on them. Because they had already repented, they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the seal, the Holy Spirit of promise. Feel the rain. Every head bow. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your spirit. Lord, maybe there's somebody in this building.
with uplifted hands. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, glory, majesty, domain, and power and both now and forever let us all say in Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen.